Hello, I'm Cliff, N4CCB. Today, I want to talk about the importance of proper spacing in Morse code. Morse code with proper spacing is easier to copy, just like text with a proper spacing is easier to read. We need a tiny bit of space between the letters, a little more space between words, and something to mark the end of a thought or a sentence. Now, if you want to get really technical, the official timing for Morse code goes like this. First of all, the basic unit of measure for the timing is the duration of a dit. So the length of a dit is, that's right, one dit. The inter-element spacing between dits and dots while forming a letter is one dit. A da is sustained for three dits worth of time. The space between letters is three dits, and the space between words is seven dits. Now right now some of you are thinking, holy cow, do I really have to wait three dits between letters and do I have to sit there and count up to seven dits in my head between words? Yeah, you do. Okay, just kidding. Of course you don't. It's not required that the Morse code you're sending is perfect. As long as it's good, you're golden. But if your Morse code is sloppy, it's more work to try to copy your sloppy code and there are people who are going to pretend they can't hear you. I know that for a fact because I'm one of those people. If I'm calling CQ and a station comes back to me with hard to understand Morse code, like they're using a straight key and the timing's all jacked up and out of whack, I'm pretty much always going to pretend I can't hear them. Does that make me a bad person? Eh. By the way, this is exactly why I think people learning to send Morse code should use paddles instead of a straight key. With paddles, the electronic keyer is going to send out a stream of dits and dots that are exactly the right length with the correct spacing between the dits and dots. Sure, you can screw up the spacing between elements so that your A sounds like an E followed by a T. But with a keyer, you're going to get closer to the correct timing than most beginners who are using a straight key. Now, to be sure, there are operators who deviate from the official timing as a matter of personal style. They've tweaked the dot to dash ratio to their taste. They've made their dits a little shorter, dragging out the dots maybe. And while you're certainly welcome to do that, it's not standard. And it causes our brains to have to work harder because it's not what we're used to listening to. So I don't recommend you go rogue and invent your own Morse code timing. But if you want to be different, it's better to err on the side of adding a little more space. Adding a little extra space between letters and words can be a good thing. When sending to someone who's still learning Morse code, it can be helpful to add a little bit of space between the letters to give them some extra time to decode that letter before you move on to the next one. The same goes for words. Okay, so that covers spacing and brings us to the end of a sentence. Now, at the end of a sentence, you've got a few options. You can send a period, da-da, da-da, da-da. There's nothing wrong with sending da-da, da-da, da-da at the end of each sentence, but a period does take longer to send than just about anything else. Your second option, as an alternative to the period, you'll find that most people are sending the prosign BT, da 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 The BT prosign is interpreted as a separator or a pause. In fact, you're going to hear hams sending multiples of these while they're having a senior moment or gathering their thoughts before continuing to send more text, like, been ham since 86, but not always active. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Uh, weather is cold and windy. All right, the third option, if you really want to streamline things, is to string your thoughts together with the word and, which in Morse code is commonly abbreviated with the letters ES. Dit da da dit. Your RST is 599, dit da da dit. Name Cliff, Cliff, dit da da dit. QTH, Tennessee, Tennessee. Well, in normal conversation, stringing your sentences together with the word and eventually makes the person you're talking to want to kill themselves, right? It's going to create a long run-on sentence. At the very least, they're going to pretend they can no longer hear you. In Morse code, that's like, sorry, old man, QSB, QSB, uh, uh, 73, SK, day, N4, CCB. Okay, I really have never done that before. Or have I? No, I haven't. All right, I want to leave you with a great resource for listening to perfect Morse code. It comes from the ARRL. Not only do they offer regularly scheduled broadcasts of code practice sessions at various speeds, but you can download their MP3 files from their website, and it's all free. Getting those MP3 files from their website lets you listen to their practice sessions on your computer, your smartphone, or your tablet, no matter where you are. Well, that's about everything I can think of to say on this topic. The big takeaway here is just to remember to add a little reasonable amount of space between your letters and a little more space between your words, and you're going to do fine. Thanks for watching.